Good morning, Peter Gertz, I'm a psychiatrist. When doctors don't agree with each other, I mean, it never happens, but no, I'm kidding. It often happens and it's something to consider and that's why I'm bringing it up. Medicine and psychiatry are to a large extent gray areas. It's not all about knowledge, science. There's a good part that's an art and clinical judgment is very important and clinical judgment basically is a feeling after you've gotten all the facts to put everything together and see how you feel about a given situation or patient. So your gut feeling is important in my opinion. And a lot of medicine cannot fit into a protocol or a computer program. And thank God there's a lot of room for clinical judgment and feeling and art in medicine. What brought me to talk about this is I saw an ER patient and it was an older lady and she had talked about what sounded like maybe bizarre behavior and I wasn't sure if she was psychotic or not or if it actually happened. It was what she described conceivably could have happened. So I wasn't sure if she was psychotic or not. And she was quite lucid and linear in her thinking and did not seem dangerous as far as suicidality, homicidality. She was oriented. So I talked with a family, with a family member and the family member said she had never been delusional. And if she says something, we need to believe her. <laughs> so that was the situation. And I ultimately felt, okay, it sounds reasonable to discharge the patient back home from the emergency room. And that's what I recommended. And I was a consultant, so I was not directly in charge of the patient. And actually I saw that patient virtually. So I was not even in the same hospital. So in a situation like that, there can be conflict because I recommended discharge. The ER doctor wrote me a note saying that she felt really more comfortable with admitting the patient to a psychiatric hospital. And that was against the patient's will, of course. The patient did not want to go to a psychiatric hospital. And I wrote back to the ER doctor, that's understandable. I'm just a consultant. And it's, it was a difficult situation. So differences of opinion amongst doctors can happen. And you want to be kind to your colleagues. They're humans. And you don't want to start letting your ego taking control and creating a drama type situation. So primarily, you, of course, want to have the best interests of the patient in mind and focus on that. But also, again, you don't want to ignore your colleagues. You want to be kind to them. They're human, just like the patients. And so are you, of course. And your colleagues may be right and you, be, you may be wrong. So in that situation, I did not have enormously strong feelings so if you have a disagreement and you're not in charge, you want to look at how strong are your feelings about your opinion that's different from the other doctors and the other doctor is the one in charge. So in this situation, my feelings were not enormously strong. So I just let it go. If I'd felt very strongly, let's say in another situation, I had recommended psychiatric hospitalization because I knew the patient had guns at home, the patient had attempted suicide that same day, they came to the hospital, etc. So I felt, if I felt very strongly that a patient was about to kill himself or herself and the ER doctor wanted to discharge the patient, then of course I would want to oppose that and maybe talk at length with the ER doctor. And if that didn't help, then ask maybe that supervisors also talk with us and come to some agreement regarding the situation. There are ethical issues, of course, so you don't want to do something that
that does not feel right ethically to you, there are legal issues, and what's not ethical may still be legal. So in a situation like the one I described, if an ER doctor wanted to discharge a patient who I felt was acutely suicidal, that would be legal in the sense that the ER doctor has a right to do it, but not ethical and actually not legal because there are laws <laughs> that you should not discharge a suicidal patient, but the ER doctor might not feel that they're suicidal. So there can be tricky legal and ethical aspects. Other tricky situations, one situation was a patient of mine was to be discharged. The supervisor wanted that patient switched or transferred to another hospital, another psychiatric hospital, and the patient did not want to go. So the patient was slated to be transferred to a state psychiatric hospital, did not want to go, and a urine specimen was required of the patient in order to be transferred to the state hospital. The patient refused to give the urine specimen, so that meant the patient could not be transferred. It was a female patient, relatively young. And in a meeting with the staff of the ward, a supervising psychiatrist, so a psychiatrist who was in, administrative, in an administrative role in that hospital, instructed us to threaten the patient to catheterize her bladder against her will if she did not give the urine specimen. That I did not do. Now, unfortunately, in my opinion, unfortunately, other staff members did that and she gave the specimen. So I still feel bad to this day that I did not prevent other staff members from threatening that patient to catheterize her unless she gave a urine specimen. On the other hand, I don't know if I don't have control over other people. I was not a supervisor, but still I feel bad about that situation. There can be major disagreements amongst doctors regarding diagnosis and treatment. For example, a tricky one might be bipolar disorder versus borderline personality disorder. And that, of course, has major consequences regarding treatment. You know, if you diagnose someone with bipolar disorder, you most likely want to start a mood stabilizer, whereas in borderline personality disorder, the main treatment would be psychotherapy. Staffing can be a tricky issue, and you might come under pressure because of staffing issues. A patient of mine who attempted suicide, I think maybe even a day before, was on a psychiatric hospital ward on a suicide watch, and the administration, of course, wanted to have as much nursing staff available in general as possible. And I came under pressure, or I felt under pressure by the head nurse on the ward. And I liked her, we got along well, I was friendly with her. And she basically asked me, can we please take this patient off a suicide watch? We need the staff, we're very short on staff. So I did that and unfor or I ordered that the suicide watch be discontinued. Unfortunately though, within a few hours, maybe even less an hour or two, the patient hung himself or almost killed himself by hanging himself on the ward, went to the ICU and then died in the ICU. So that's another situation where I, in hindsight, made a mistake and that was a real problem. Tricky situation though, because right after the patient's suicide watch was lifted, he was actually dancing in the hallway to disco music, that music on. But then within a short period, he went to his room and tried to hang himself. So rather than being pressured to do something or letting yourself be pressured to do something you don't feel is appropriate. It's better to have conflict with the staff than to lose a patient to suicide, for example. Another example is 
a patient of mine. He'd been incarcerated for years, very depressed gentleman, had a significant medical issue, had used heroin, IV heroin, and I was about to go to a conference, away to a conference, and the patient told me, I really cannot function outside the hospital. They'd wanted me, to, I, think, I think, to discharge him before I went to the conference, traveled away. And the patient told me, no, I definitely don't feel comfortable being outside of the hospital. I'm going to end up dead. And I was at the conference and I told the covering doctor about my concern about that patient. And my feeling was that he should not be discharged while I was gone. And I was gone for about a week, maybe five days. And the supervising psychiatrist had a meeting with the staff and he instructed the doctor who was covering for me, as far as I recall, he instructed that doctor to discharge the patient which that doctor did, and then the patient was found in the community with unresponsive with a needle in his arm, and he'd injected heroin, overdosed, and then died in the ICU after that. So that was another situation that, in hindsight, I feel bad about. So bottom line, Medicine, a lot of the practice of medicine does not fit into a protocol or a schema. It's not cut and dried. It's an art, thank God, fortunately. And clinical judgment and your feelings about a situation, your feelings about the treatment of the patient, your opinion are crucial. And if your opinion is drastically different from another doctor's opinion and the other doctor's in charge, you want to look at how strong is your feeling, what would be the consequences of not opposing that doctor's opinion. And if you feel it's important, you may want to oppose that doctor's opinion as strongly as possible, maybe even get supervisors involved so that, for example, a patient does not come to harm. Thank you.